a note about testing, I think that's important is understanding not just getting tested, but understanding which tests are being performed because um, not all STI tests and not all STI panels are the same. And you may not actually even be getting tested. For instance, if you're getting a pap smear done, an annual physical and you're a person with a vagina, um, then you may not actually be getting STI tests done at all. Pap smears typically don't include STI tests unless that's part of the regular annual testing procedure and that's included in your annual test or your triannual or you know, however often you're getting them done right now based on the recommendations. But um, it's important to know which tests you're getting tested for so that you can communicate that too, because you may go to one clinic and they'll test you for three things. And you may go to another and they'll test you for four. So understanding what tests are being performed, which ones and what actual tests are being performed is important too. And I have a question about that. Uh, so when it, so testing, um, home testing kits are getting more and more popular and um, I notice in them, there's often like different packages or levels that you can buy it'll be like get these three tests together or get these five tests together and it's obviously it can be a pretty significant price difference are there like certain groups of tests and and I mean and I and I assume my assumption there is that like the 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 cheaper three let's call it are going to include like the major ones um, and then like the larger one, like that's, if you're feeling you might be more at risk, do you feel that that's generally true slash, like, I know that you don't know, like all the testing kits out there. That's not the question. Um, but like, do, are, are there, are there, which STIs do you feel are like the most important to get? If you're doing these regular tests, here's what you need to be getting regularly tested on or for. Yeah. So that's a really great question because the recommendations are different for every gender. And really that just means genital configuration as well as every age, as well as every um, behavioral pattern, depending on what types of sex you're engaging with, engaging in, um, whether you are a sex worker, whether you are um, often enjoying casual sex and, and maybe just oral sex. And so it's tough because there's not one blanket, like here are the five tasks that everyone should get. Um, I think the online test, the one that you're, the ones you're talking about, there are quite a few private companies and, and they offer some great tests. I will give the caveat that I actually found one recently that I was working with. And then I stopped working with them because they were offering a urine test for herpes, which is not accurate at all and gives you no information and is, is a horribly wildly um, problematic way in which to test for herpes and should not ever be used. It should be a blood test. So it's, it's important to do a little bit of your due diligence if you are going to seek an online private testing. Like you said too, they're expensive. They can be. They're not nearly as accessible financially. Um, so the difference, the diff there, there's three different like layers of STI testing. You can get free testing done, which is typically done at a, uh, like a health department or a public health clinic. And those usually offer the fewest number of tests. And that's typically three to four tests. There's some of the most common STIs. So it's, it's, definitely good to get tested for those infections, but that's not encompassing all infections, of course. And the tests that you can get done for free at like a public health department or a clinic are going to be for chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, and HIV. Those are the four you see most often. Then you could potentially go to your healthcare provider and get tested that may or may not be covered by insurance and or it could be on a sliding scale. Planned Parenthood, I would also categorize into the healthcare provider category, even though they're a clinic, because they don't offer all testing for free and sometimes it's sliding scale income based. 
and they offer a little larger, wider array of tests. And they're going to usually ask a little bit more, even, even the free clinics ask screening questions about your behavior. And sometimes that can feel off-putting and very invasive because they're asking you like, are you engaging in oral sex? Have you ever been paid for sex? Have you ever used drugs while you're, you know, and it seems like I don't want you to know all that business and maybe I don't want to share that or I'm not proud of it or whatever it is, however you feel around those things and questions in that conversation. The reason they're asking them is particular because they will give you potentially different tests based on your activity. So if you are having partners who you're just engaging in oral sex with, then they'll often offer you a throat swab because you can have an infection in your mouth or throat and not have it genitally. And then it wouldn't be detected on like a urine or a blood test. So then there's the four paid private companies. There's ones that will deliver tests right to your home. And then there's also ones where you can like go to just a regular, any kind of clinic where they do like blood draws and urine samples for drug testing, for workers and all um, any manner of reason. So you'd walk into this clinic and you'd get your blood and urine drawn. Um, and nobody would know necessarily why you're there because people are there for a variety of reasons. Those are the paid ones. The nice thing about those is you can get a ton more infections tested. They offer things like hepatitis A, B, and C, trick, which is sometimes offered by some of these other providers. Um, I'm trying to think of some, oh, herpes. You can get herpes tests. You can also request a herpes test from not from a private or not from a public clinic for free, um, but from like one of the sliding scales of Planned Parenthood or your private healthcare provider, but they may or may not allow you to get tested for it. So usually herpes test, blanket testing or routine testing isn't recommended for herpes um, currently. And you either have to have a partner who you know has it and or you have to have signs or symptoms that are present. But sometimes at Planned Parenthood, you can just ask for it and pay for it separately. So there's these three categories, like the free, where you get like three to four tests. Then there's the middle, the private healthcare providers and or like a Planned Parenthood clinic, which is oftentimes sliding scale, maybe covered by insurance. And then there's your private providers, which offer you a vast, a larger array of types of tests. And they also do some screening questions, which can help direct you to which tests might be suitable for you based on behavior and age, et cetera, genital configuration. But those are going to be a whole lot more expensive, of course, like you mentioned, and they can, they can be upwards for like an entire package, 10 to 14 tests can be two to $300.